Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig. In today's video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I love photographing in the wintertime. Here we go. So winter is here in the Northeast. As I look out my bay window, which is where I film my videos because I get some beautiful light through this window, I see a bunch of snow covered trees. We got a little bit of snow last night and uh, I wanna get out there and photograph because it looks so beautiful and the conditions are pretty optimal. But before I do that, I wanna share with you guys 10 reasons why I really love winter photography. Number one is that there are less people out and about. If you photograph on public land, a national park, state forest, wildlife refuge, anything like that, I know you know that it can get very tricky sometimes having to deal with just other people that are out there enjoying nature. You're working with the subject and it's getting comfortable with you. And then the moment that you wanna take the photograph, it gets flushed inadvertently by another passerby. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. I could not encounter a single person for like 20 minutes. And as soon as I have a subject in front of my lens that I want to photograph, somebody comes by and flushes it like every time. In the winter time, there are just less people out. It's cold. People don't want to go out and walk in the cold. So it's a real advantage for us photographers because we can photograph with less interruption. Number two is that sunrise is later in the day. When the daylight hours are really long, you have to get up at such an early hour in order to get out there for first light. And if you wanna get out there for sunrise during the winter time, you have a little bit of a reprieve. It's a little bit later. And it's just for me, being a non-morning person, a little bit easier to get up for. Number three is that the light is pretty good throughout the day. When the daylight hours are longer and you're working with sunlight, really the best times to photograph are the beginning of the day and the end of the day because the light is the lowest at that time. It's more eye level to your subject. Once the light gets really high in the sky, the shadows tend to get really harsh and unflattering and the light in general is just not that great. But in the winter time, because the daylight hours are shorter, those two times of day kind of get smushed together. And the sun really doesn't get that high in the sky. And even though the light will still get a little bit strong in the middle of the day, I think it's totally workable. As an example, I took this shot of a hooded merganser. This was taken at like 1230 in the afternoon in December. And yeah, the light is a little bit strong, but I still really like it. I think it's a successful image and there's no way that I could get that light at that time of day during the summertime. Number four is that potential subjects can be found throughout the day. Now your mileage may vary a little bit with this, but for me personally, I just find that it's easier to find subjects in the middle of the day during the winter time than it is during the summertime. One of the factors in bird behavior is energy conservation. Birds don't want to expend energy needlessly. And one of the things that expends energy is body temperature regulation. So in the winter time, birds need to spend energy keeping warm. And the easiest time to do that is in the middle of the day, of course, when it's the warmest, as opposed to in the summertime where bird activity is really, really minimal in the middle of the day because it's the hottest time of the day, right? So birds are maybe hiding in some marsh grass or up in the tree canopy trying to keep cool. And there are other factors at play there, of course, but just generally speaking, I think that finding subjects in the middle of the day in the winter time is a lot easier than in the warmer months. Number five is that birds are bolder and their behavior is more predictable. And this has to do with the fact that food during the winter time is scarcer. So birds will really stay near a food source, whether it's a bird feeder or maybe a berry bush or something like that. They may flush initially, but if you just stay and stay still and quiet, they'll more likely come back to that food source. I'm gonna show you guys my, a photo from my very first winter season photographing this. I was only a few months into bird photography and I was walking along a trail on a refuge and I found these robins feeding on this berry bush. And I noticed after a few minutes that there were actually also a flock of cedar waxwings that were sharing that same bush. 
And I love cedar waxwings. They're one of my favorite small birds to photograph. So I stuck around and the birds stuck around. And it took them a little while to kind of get up the nerve to go back to their bush, but eventually they did. And I got what I thought at the time were some really great photos. Uh, you know, and now I think, you know, they're all right. They're not, they're not, they're not so bad, but they could be better. <laughs> Number six is that there are no leaves for birds to hide in. In the warmer months when trees have leaves on them, yes, they're beautiful and they can really add to a photograph, but they also make it really tough sometimes to see a bird and to photograph it without any obstructions. So in the colder months, when there are no leaves on the trees, it's just easier to spot birds and easier to photograph them. As an example, this is an Eastern Screech Owl that I photographed in May. This particular tree cavity was just surrounded by leaves and luckily for me it was a little bit breezy and so the leaves would move out of the way and by some miracle I was able to get the head of this bird sharp and get a photograph that's you know it's okay it's not great but um, I was able to get it as opposed to this photograph here this is the same bird taken in the following January. As you can see, there are a lot of branches in the way still, but it's much easier to see the bird without the leaves, of course, than with the leaves. Number seven is that snow can add something really special to your photographs. Whether there's snow falling in your shot, or it's simply just part of your photograph on the ground or on a branch or something like that, it can really help tell an interesting story. As an example, to keep the screech owl theme going, if you've been following my channel and my Instagram, you know that I photograph a lot of Eastern Screeches, uh, but this is a shot that I got of an Eastern Screech Owl a couple of years ago. When I got to the tree cavity, it was snowing and I wanted to get a photograph of this owl with the snow falling, but it wasn't visible in its cavity. So I walked around a little bit and I came back. By that time it had stopped snowing and the Screech Owl was visible and I was able to get this shot of it. And even though you can't see the snow falling, you can see it on the tree. And I just think that that really adds something to this photograph with this grumpy owl face sticking, sticking out of that tree cavity. I think it just really is really great. And then another example is of this great gray owl. I photographed this owl on a refuge in uh, the Montreal area w with this lightly falling snow. I just think that it really adds something really special and I really love this photograph. Number eight is that there are no bugs, or I should say less bugs. There was one December where it was unseasonably warm and I did pull a tick off me, which was really disconcerting for a few reasons. But for the most part, no bugs. I really don't like bugs. And of course, in the warmer months, it's just something that you have to deal with. And you can help yourself a little bit by wearing bug spray and long pants, long sleeves, that sort of thing. But in the colder months, you just really don't have to worry about that as much, if at all. The only way that I really love bugs is when they are bird food, of course. I want the birds to have their meal for sure. Bugs can also bother birds <laughs> when they're not being eaten. This is a photograph of a dark-eyed junco that I took in Seattle a few years ago. And you can't see it in this photograph. I did get a few photographs of it but there was a yellow jacket or, or a it wasn't a wasp, I think it was a yellow jacket, and it kept harassing this bird and flushing it off of this perch with this beautiful fall color in the background, which was really frustrating to me, but I did get the shot. Number nine is that far <sighs> farking peas. Number nine is that parking fees can be cheaper. If you're going to someplace like a beach during the summertime where other people are gonna be going for recreation or something like that, chances are you're going to have to pay a parking fee. And in the colder months, in the wintertime, during the off season, those fees are either greatly reduced or simply non-existent. Number 10 is that with wintertime comes different types of birds. We get a lot of birds that migrate to the Northeast during the wintertime, species of owls, hawks, ducks, snow buntings, and some other smaller birds like that. And if I didn't get out there during the winter time to photograph, I wouldn't see these birds, let alone photograph them. So I really love to go out in the winter time to photograph the species that come in, just like I do during the spring. So those are my 10 reasons why I love to go out and photograph in the winter time. I hope that these reasons have inspired you to go pull on some long johns, get some good gloves and a hat, 
and get out there and see what you can get with your photography. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to my channel if you're so inclined. It would help me out a lot. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you know when I put out another video. Please feel free to check me out on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see my work. You can also check me out on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. The link is in the description below. And until the next video, everyone, take care. Happy adventuring, happy shooting, stay warm. See you later, bye.